Okay, hey guys, we're going to get started probably around now. So, yeah. In case anyone, is anyone else is coming in? Well, uh, well, so I'm Lucas. I'm part of FTC 310. I'm Mishra Mahid. I'm part of FTC 479. And so, we're going to be talking about Adometry and Roadrunner. Um, this should be a shorter guide. It's not going to take 50 minutes. We're going to talk about um, Adometry and Roadrunner, why you would want to use Adometry and Roadrunner, and, you know, a uh, quick start and how to get into it. So yeah, let's get started. So the first basic idea of Roadrunner is the idea of pose and trajectory. You know, when you're thinking about a robot on the field, you usually do a system where you drive forward some number of inches or move this way some number of inches based on time or distance. Uh, Roadrunner basically takes this on a different perspective. You think of the field as a whole coordinate system and you're thinking about where the robot is on position on the coordinate system globally rather than uh, relative to the initial starting position. And you think about this, basically, the robot has an X and Y position, the coordinate on the field, and a heading, which is basically uh, an angle, like radians or degrees. You want to think about it that way. So if you look up there, you can see, let's say that cube is the robot. It has some sort of X and Y position, and sort of like a displacement angle theta. And this basically allows you to uh, produce uh, trajectories a lot easier. You can basically co coordinate where it's going to go. It's going to go from like 0, 0 to 2, 3. Just, just like that, rather than like coordinating like, oh, we have to move this way and then this way. You can make it much easier on yourself when you think of it through that framework. Think of it as a more global system on the field. And with Roadrunner, you can do a lot more complex trajectories rather than like move in a single line. Let's say move this way four inches, move up this way five inches. Uh, the, base, uh, the basic trajectory builder in uh, Roadrunner uses a system called, known as splines, which is a system of curves that sort of look like this. They're much more complex. You can you don't just like it's not a single line. It allows your robot to move a lot easier through the field, a lot smoother. And with uh, the Roadrunner provides a lot of libraries for PID correction, which is basically a system of error correction, which allows you to do a lot more accurate than any sort of regular uh, translational or time-based uh, robot movement. And uh, another part of Roadrunner that makes it really special is that you can do a lot of different markers on the field. Let's say you want to move in the middle of this movement from point A to point B, you want to make the robot mechanism move down, or you want something to, to rotate on the robot. Uh, Roadrunner provides a lot of libraries to make that possible so that you can, you know, in the middle of a movement, do a lot of coordinated actions at the same time. And you can keep track of how the robot moves on the field so that, you know, you don't get a system where you need to keep track of like, oh, it's moved this distance and this distance, let me think about, you know, where it's going to be on the field 20 movements later. With a global positioning system, you're allowed to think about it more as like point, different discrete points on the field rather than like uh, translations in general. So like the main takeaway from this is that like um, we're thinking more about position rather than thinking in terms of time, right? Um, traditionally, we might do like oh at at um, at like two seconds in, I want to do this, right? Well, now we can do things in terms of position, right? When a robot reaches. Um, X, Y, right? We do this. And doing things in terms of position is much more intuitive and much more easier to do things that, rather than doing things in terms of time. Um, this is something that applies more to FTC. Out of curiosity, who um, does FTC? Is it hand? Okay, yeah, so this, is, this might apply to you guys. Um, for FRC, this doesn't really apply. I don't think it does. You guys don't use mechanism wheels. But essentially, in FTC, the meta is, F is mechanism wheels, right? You can, move, or you can move up and down, you can move left and right. And and mechanism wheels are really nice for, for just mobility, right? You can go really anywhere you want on the field with them. It's really easy. But the issue with them is that they often slip, right? You go forwards and it moves a little bit to the left or a little bit to the right, and it doesn't really track that change. Um, so I guess the motor encoders, right? They would, they would see, oh, the mechanism wheels, it moves this much, right? But if it slips, you can't really track that change, right? This is, there's going to be change that, leave, that, that gets left untracked. Um, the way you deal with this is by handing off the task to something else, right? In this case, we hand off the task to dead wheel odometry, omni wheels, right? Um, we would use omni wheels and we would attach, you know, an encoder to it, and we'd have that track the track like you know ticks, right? Revolutions to figure out where the robot is. Um, so omni wheels don't slip, right? But mechanism wheels do slip. So we're gonna so while we use mechanism wheels to move our robot, we're gonna use omni wheels and we're gonna attach an encoder to it to figure out how far it goes. Um, and I guess here we're just going to show you like some, some things we're able to accomplish. Um, so in this case, right, um, this is our robot, Nautam. Okay. 
And you guys see how it moves, right? It moves in a straight line, but it's moving its heading at the same time. That's able to be accomplished with like the, with um, the things we're talking about with codes and trajectories, right? You can't accomplish that with time-based algorithm. It's just really, really hard. But doing things in terms of math, right? In terms of a coordinate plane, it's way easier to make those movements possible. Right? And there's also that line in the beginning, if you guys remember that, right? And also, when it shot those disks, right? That was also based on, you know, when it reached X, Y position, right? Doing things in terms of position is just way easier. Um, and these, these automated paths, right, they're not only limited to Auton, right? You can also do things in Telia. For example, um, in Ultimate Goal, right, um, in FTC's Ultimate Goal, there is a certain spot, right, like a, a sweet spot, right, that you want to go to so you can shoot out your disks and whatnot, right? You can, you can get to that sweet spot by using trajectories, right? Say that I save this trajectory, right? Say that I want my robot to be here. Um, in this case, we're clicking this analog stick, right, to save this point, and we go to wherever we want in the field. Then when we press the X button, it'll go back to that position, right? Because we have created a trajectory and we're able to go back to the position because we did things in terms of coordinate plane. Again, if you do that things in terms of time, it just is impossible. Um, okay. Now I'm gonna talk about creating Debbie Aldonchi. Uh, this, again, this doesn't apply to really FRC, but this does, does apply to FTC. Um, the, so we use omnibus, right, like I mentioned before. And something else you have to take note is to have downwards tensioning. Um, the reason why you, does anyone wanna like, have an idea of why you want downwards tensioning? If you have like a dominant tree and you have like a wheel trying to track position. Um, the reason why you want downwards tensioning is because if you don't have downwards tensioning, right? Uh, the wheel won't be able to track the position that well because it is not enough friction and that's acting on the wheel. So you want the wheel to be able to turn on the field Right? But you don't want it to slip, so you need downwards tensioning to make sure it doesn't slip. Um, at the same time, you don't want to just attach it to a shaft and just let it ride along with the robot, you know, because you don't want it to support the weight of the robot, because odometry is relatively fragile. You don't want it to break, right? So you use springing or you use like, you know, tensioning of some sort, right? To make sure that it goes downwards, but it doesn't go too much downwards, right? I hope that makes sense. Like, you don't want too much tension, but you want enough tension to make it do what it needs to do. Um, and also like compatible and effective spacing, just don't like put all your geometry modules in like a straight line, right? That just isn't logical. Um, put it somewhere evenly spaced out, right? In this case, right, um, you want the center omni wheel to be well in the center, right? And you want the omni wheels on the left and the right to be, you know, laterally placed and, and ideally symmetrically placed, right? Not too close together, but enough, uh, just far enough apart where they can individually um, be useful. <laughs> uh, what else? Oh. You can. You don't need three wheel uh, odometry. Two wheel odometry is also uh, also, also um, very useful because it's it's just like three wheel odometry is typically better, but two wheel odometry is fine. Um, if you don't understand that, it's totally fine. You guys can check out um, the resources that we're going to link later on, so you can figure out the differences between different types of odometry and whatnot. So yeah. So how do you get started once you created the hardware that's enabled you to track the robot? You know, we we let's say you installed some dead wheels. You installed the encoders onto them, and you you tried to get started with actually coding how to keep track of where the robot moves. One of the greatest libraries available right now to get this done is known as Rodon, and we talked about it a little bit. And their accompanying uh, UI framework, uh, FTC dashboard. So you can get really uh, started. Uh, you can get really quickly started uh, with Learn Roadrunner website, and they have a quick start repo, I believe, that you can has everything installed for you, so you can just download that. It'll get started right away. Uh, when we got started, all you need to do is just clone the repo. I know a lot of people already use uh, uh, GitHub for all sorts of, for doing the regular SDK. This is just like that. So uh, getting started looking at this dashboard right here, uh, before we get started with actual odometry, I want to introduce you to the idea of FTC dashboard. It's sort of like a way for you to uh, edit code live without actually recompiling the code and pushing it back onto the robot. It, that takes a lot of time. I know that, like when you're doing iterative processes, trying to change little constants about like how far something needs to move. FTC dashboard could help a lot with that sort of process. So you can see here, here's an example of what you might see on your dashboard. And it's a little bit blurry, but once you connect the dashboard to the robot, you're able to see different constants. You're able to change variables on the fly. You're able to graph different variables. You can see here, let's say you want to graph a particular target velocity, and then you're tracking what the actual velocity of the robot is you're able to graph that live on the robot, and as you change the constants, you're able to see how that affects the robot. So that really speeds up development time instead of like, let me type a little number into the uh, Android Studio, re-push the robot, and see how it changes it. You can do it, with, do it in just a few seconds. 
And here you can also, it's not really shown, but you can also, when you're doing uh, computer vision, this is really helpful because you can see what the robot's seeing at, in lot, at live time. You can see what sort of detections it's making. Let's say you want to, you know, this year at FTC, I know that you want to keep track of rubber ducks on the field. It's one of the main things at the beginning of the game. And so you want to be able to position what the camera should look like. If you're able to using uh, FTC dashboard, you'll be able to look and see what the robot is doing. At the same time, you're coding different constants, different uh, variables uh, uh, during this. And one last thing, it's easy telemetry. Um, you're able to keep track of di diagnostic things on the robot. You want to like print statements, stuff like that. You don't know why your code isn't working. FTC dashboard makes it easy to see little comments all around. So overall, this basically makes it like much more intuitive to work with the robot, much easier than like uh, Android Studio usually is. Um, some sort of like an in-between between, between uh, you know, the code blocks and uh, using uh, actual Java. So yeah, just yeah. note that FCC dashboard isn't the same thing as you know Adometry or Deadwood. Like, isn't it's not the same thing as Roadrunner, right? It's separate from Roadrunner and Adometry, but it's extremely useful, like because of the things that Lucas mentioned, right? Like, you can tune things on the fly, and that's really useful for when you're dealing with Adometry and you're trying to tune a lot of variables, which will end up happening. Um. Anyway. So yeah. So once you get started uh, with FCC dashboard, you want may want to get started with uh, Roadrunner. So once you get once you're uh, able to link up all the hardware, FTC, provi FTC Roadrunner provides a lot of tutorials on how to actually connect the encoders and the dead wheels to the to the code. And once you do that, you're going to need to do a lot of tuning. I know it sounds like a lot of work, and it is a little bit of work. But tuning is one of the main ways you get this sort of uh, code to work. Uh, you want to keep track of like and make sure not once you get started tuning, you want to make sure not to change anything major on your robot. Um, so one of the main reasons why you want to do this is because uh, tuning basically keeps track of the weight distribution on the robot. Uh, weight distribution on the robot, uh, changing that makes it, the robot drive a little differently. And you might think that it's really small, like let's say you move a mechanism or remove a mechanism on the robot. Those sort of differences are what uh, basically the whole point of Roadrunner is in order to correct those small weight distributions, grip on the field, that sort of uh, uh, environment, and trying to correct for it. So once you get started tuning, you want to make sure that you don't really change too much. Because uh, tuning does take quite a while. It's one of the main uh, downsides, I would say, of Roadrunner. But besides that, you get ama basically amazing sorts of uh, ability to change what you're able to do during autonomous. So there's all sorts of tuning that you might want to do in the process. You might want to start with localization tuning, um, basically correcting the odometry movements you know, on the robot. Even though uh, even the dead wheels themselves, the encoders, keeping track of how far the robot has moved, is not entirely accurate. You're not trying to... It's not entirely uh, perfect with its own grip. Even if you have a good tension and a good grip on the field, it isn't perfect. So you want to tune that sort of thing. And that will be done through FTC dashboard. It makes it really easy to see, you know, like it thought it moved 90 inches, but it actually moved 92 inches. And you're able to correct for that and change some variables. Yeah, um, I also just like, um, you guys might have heard of like, oh, PIDs, you need, you need calculus for PIDs, right? And like these trajectories, you know, they might need calculus right now, right? In reality, like to use Roadrunner, you really just need geometry and the time and patience to do all this tuning that Lucas mentioned. It's really just tuning and then knowing a, how a coordinate plane works, right? Those, as long as you know those two things, you're gonna be able to easily get up, uh, up and starting with Roadrunner. So yeah, um, just one last, so once you uh, get all this tuning done, you can also use a PID system. I know uh, it's just talked about that. It isn't just for driving. You can also use it for different mechanisms on the robot. Last year, I know Aegis team did it for a flywheel. Um, one of the main points of the, uh, of the game last year was to shoot these rings into a goal, and they accomplished that through a flywheel. And so, you know, you, in order to control how fast it speeds up, to control where the, to have a consistent uh, trajectory for the rings as they fly through the air, you might want to use a PID system, which basically corrects for error in that, in that sort of process, because as we said, every time, you can never correct for 100% of the error through hardware. You're going to need to do some of it through software. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, like the odometry, right? It, it measures the distance, what not, right? And then it adjusts it using these PIDs. And then afterwards, uh, you're basically free to start uh, doing some coding in sort of the trajectory. You can see here is a very basic sort of trajectory. Um, this would be a part of a linear upload, uh, if you know, if you're uh, doing software. And then something makes it very easy uh, to do. Uh, move it from one point to another. You can see it starts from the origin. That's where if you, if you don't specify anything, you don't think it's at the origin. And you can do a spline, as we talked to earlier, to another point in the, in the field. And it will automatically, uh, once you run the op mode, build this trajectory. And uh, behind the scenes, it does a lot of calculus and a lot of math in order to get this to work. But the, the beauty of a library is that you don't have to touch any of it. You write this one line of code, and it will be able to calculate that all for you. 
It'll move from one spot to the other spot, just like that. You can see it, it changes its position from 0, 0 to 40, 40. There's position there, and it changes its heading uh, from, a zero, from a 0 radians mark to the 90 radian mark, which is, or the, I mean, 90 degree mark. 90 degrees, pi over 2 radians. Pi over 2. Pi over 2 radians. I, know, I totally know what I'm talking about with radians. So yeah. Um, yeah. And that's really about it for the presentation. Um, LearnRoadRunner.com is like on the top very right there, right? If you want to get into Roadrunner, right? Get into user really quickly, especially for FTC teams. Um, I don't know how applicable it will be for FRC teams, but they do have some, um, some code for you to look at, right? So maybe it'll help you get an idea of how to use Roadrunner. Um, game Manual Zero on dead wheels. Um, game Manual Zero is very useful for FTC, um, and it is useful to an extent for FRC teams, right? They have basic concepts for you to understand there. Um, and it's like an overall documentation of like how things work and engineering concepts and whatnot, right? Um, very useful, and they, that's their, they have a dead wheel guide over there, right? Uh, the one that we linked. And Open Adometry is essentially like an open source, um, open source CAD for Adometry, right? So if you want to get started with Adometry really quickly, right? You can use Open Adometry, and um, it's, it's essentially like a CAD, it's like essentially like CAD files, right? And like the parts, right? So if you want to 3D print your own, like you want to print out the plates or whatnot, you want to set up Adometry, right? Um, that's, that's like what it is right there, right? Um, my team used, actually used it last year, right, for Ultimate Gold, and it was really useful. We found a lot of success with it, right? It's reliable, it's consistent, um, and it's, it's just really designed, right? So like, you don't, you don't have to design your own things, right? You can use something that someone else designed, right? And FTC Discord, um, <laughs> you guys are FRC, so it's not really applicable to any of you, except for like, you guys in the back. So if you see Discord is really nice if you want if like for if you want to ask for help, right? If you're trying to figure out why something isn't working. Um and yeah. That's about it. I guess something I want to reiterate on is that you don't need um Deadwheel Adometry to use Roadrunner. If you don't want to use Deadwheel Adometry, um that's okay. You can still use Roadrunner because Roadrunner is the pathing, right? It's all the pathing and all and like fixing the uh, fixing position and whatnot, right? It's the actual algorithm. Um, dead wheel is just the physical physical um, attribute, right? That lets you like figure out where a robot is using encoded text, right? It's more it's um dead uh, dead wheel adometry is increased accuracy. Roadrunner is the actual trajectory and the uh, the coordinate system and whatnot. Um, and yeah, that's about it for our presentation. That took like what like fifteen 20, minutes? Twenty minutes. Twenty minutes. Yeah. Yeah, we did not book like fifty minutes. Yeah, I don't give us that. Minutes. But yeah. If you guys have any questions about like uh, getting started or just the theory of any of it, you could definitely can. But if you guys, yeah, you have any questions? Yeah. What exactly is a spline? So, um, yeah, go back. Yeah, it's very to show. So a spline is a mathematical curve. Um, it's a bit complicated to get into right now, but basically it takes two different points. So let's say you want to go from point A to point B, and then it also takes the heading, basically, or you could call it the quote-unquote derivative at those endpoints, and generates a specific mathematical curve from point A to point B. And uh, what uh, Roadrunner does is basically, given those two, that, those four pieces of information, is able to determine what sort of uh, what uh, uh, what sort of uh, motor movement should be made to get from point A to point B. It's really uh, a lot of math that goes goes on under the behind the scenes, but we don't we basically don't have to worry about that at all because, like I said, it's basically one line of code in order to get from that point to another point. Uh, all the math aside. See that curvy part right there? That's what a spline is, right? Like you want to go around an object, right? But you still want to go to get to point A. That's what a spline helps you do. It lets you help her go around the object and then go to that point right there. So it's essentially like like we were talking about like time is often you literally can't do this, right? Like imagine trying to like change the angle as as you're like going through the through the sequence, right? Um, thing in terms of coordinate system, this is possible with because of the, all the math that Lucas mentioned. We don't need to know that math though. We just use Roadrunner and we just build the spline, right? And you can see here is another example of like a very basic spline. It goes from the yeah. origin to 4040 while the robot heading is moving. Exactly. Yeah, while the robot heading, that's even more complicated, right? But Roadrunner lets you do that because you don't need to know the math. Um, yeah, any other questions? Did that answer your question or? Yeah. Okay. All right, I mean, if there's no, no other questions, um, that's about it, really. Yeah, that's about it. So thanks for coming. Um,